So, hi everyone, my name is Sean J. McCall and I am your host of the Eurostep, which is a new format from my previous one, the fourth quarter. And if you know anything that I do, you understand that I am all for educating and informing and also hopefully entertaining those of you who really enjoy basketball, whether it be in Europe, NBA, or whatever. Of course, my forte is here in Europe since I, I live here but and I played here, but I hope to represent NBA players, European players, players that play, play in, in different countries because we're all in the same community. The format for the Eurostep is a little bit different than the fourth quarter, what I used to do. Um, with the fourth quarter, everything kind of revolved around my book, same name, different game. But this time with the Eurostep, that's why I changed the name as well. I wanted to make sure that I got everyone involved and, and on board. So, And I also wanted to make it a little bit more human or to, to check the human side of, of my guests and not just the athletic part. So that, that'll be the change. Um, yeah, my guests are going to be athletes. They're going to be ballers. They're going to be agents. They're going to be GMs. They're going to be other specialist coaches. Um that's right, Damon, I want you on here one time too. So there'll be coaches on here and um, to give their perspective into th their specialized fields, which revolve around basketball. Um, so this series will be a little bit longer. It'll go anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour. And I hope to get a little bit more interaction from the guests. So if you have a question, please just type it into the comment section and I'll try to double back while the interview is going on. And towards the end, I will try to get some questions into to my guests. Um, yeah, what else? It's important for me to highlight and interview people from all parts of the basketball community. And uh, we'll have EuroLeague guests as of like tonight. Uh, we'll have those that are still in America or elsewhere who are trying to get their feet wet and get over here to Europe that haven't made it yet. We'll have um, players that are maybe playing in the seventh league in Germany. Who knows? Um, but it's important for me to, to not only talk to those who are maybe EuroLeague players or making a whole lot of money, but also to the little guys, the little girls, or not little girls, little guys, but um, those of you that are not making maybe as much money as, as those EuroLeague players, for example, because like I said before, representation is very important for me. I think everybody deserves a, a seat at my table, and that's how we'll proceed. So enough of me preaching. Let's get this show on the, on the road. Let me wave to a couple of you guys that just came in. And uh, yeah, my guest for tonight's episode is, let me make sure I got him there. Yeah, okay. My guest for tonight's episode, uh, the premiere episode of the Eurostep is Jalen Green, who plays for Alba Berlin in the German Bundesliga, the top league here in Germany. He's also the reigning MVP of the league. He's 27 years old and played his college ball at the University of New Hampshire before coming over to Germany. We'll talk about his incredible, really incredible journey until now. And yeah, let me get him on. Let me get him in here. Go live. Let's see. That worked. He should be popping up in a minute. There we go. Yo, what's up? Gotcha, man. How you doing, man? Yeah, I'm good, man. Uh, just got back from a trip in, uh, from Frankfurt. You know, just got the dub, so it's good to be back home with the fam. Oh, you guys played tonight? No, we played, oh, uh, we played yesterday. We played oh, yesterday. yesterday. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks for, for taking time out to uh, join me and my teammates and viewers and friends and family uh, from all around the world so we can get to know you a little bit better, man. I think it's, I think it's important to make sure that, that you, as an athlete, are seen as more than just an athlete. So that's, that's my primary goal. I hear a baby in the background. Yeah, yeah, he was crawling towards me. My wife put him on the ground. He just crawled right to me when he heard it's somebody okay. on the phone. It's okay if he makes an appearance, man. If he wants to crawl on your lap, let him, let him, let him roll, man. You want to come here, huh? He's now. You see who's on the phone, huh? See, now you see who's on the phone. Everything okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. So we're going to get started. So at the start, I like to tell everyone how I I meet or met my guests. And and as as par the course, um, with with everything I'm doing lately here on Instagram, especially, um, 
there's a lot of people that I interviewed that I, I never met before in person. And you're one of those people. Um, yeah. We've never met in person. We've never played against each other. Or okay, I'm way too old for that anyway. But um, it started out that I added you on Instagram because I really, I, I became a fan watching you play. And then I think I, I hit you up after you won MVP and, and just wanted to give you a, a shout out from someone who watches the game and loves the game and, and just give some words of encouragement and let you know that there are people out there that you are, you inspire. And that's how it kind of started. And we kind of like kept in touch through that. And I hit you up for the occasional old head advice. Uh, and, yeah. uh, and so I, I really appreciate that you, that you jumped on with us and, you know, I hit you up and you were like, oh, cool, let's do it. And, and I, I really appreciate that. So let's get into the, the conversation. So, um, yeah, what we'll do is we'll do a little bit about your your athletic career, of course, because that's what everybody yeah. wants to hear. And then we'll gradually go into the personal side, nothing too in invasive into your private life. Um, yeah. And and then hopefully we'll have some questions from the from the fans and and fans and teammates. Um, like I said before, just type something in, and maybe I can I can write it down while we're doing the interview and, and ask the questions later. It doesn't matter if you're here for five minutes or, or the whole hour or whatever. Just uh, pop in, pop out. doesn't matter. I'm just glad that everybody has, has shown some interest in what we're doing. So let's get it started, man. Let's start yeah. off with high school. You went to, you went to, you ended up going to the University of New Hampshire, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, so tell me, your senior year in high school, what was the recruiting period like? Were you highly recruited coming out of high school? Uh yeah, I was uh it was a lot of you know mid major and you know low major schools uh a couple of swack you know swack like Texas Southern uh Southern University um of course New Hampshire I also had like Weber State my junior year um like Northern Colorado I don't I forgot what conference they those two schools are in but more or less you know like I said mid major low major so it wasn't it was kind of heavy but it wasn't like you know like crazy amount like other guys. What um what was your top five? My top five, uh, it was out of Southern, uh, t Southern, uh, Texas Southern. I had Weber State, New Hampshire. Was that four? And then what was the other school? I think it was Northern Colorado. I think I believe. I think yeah, okay. those are the five really. Was the recruiting period stressful for you? Uh yes. Yeah, I mean, I know we're going to talk about, you know, the aging process later, I'm sure. But uh, it's kind of it's kind of the same, you know. Yeah. You know, all the schools are sounding, you know, really good. You know, you're visiting the campus. The only difference is probably, like, maybe the landscape. And, you know, the facilities of the different schools are really different. Right. You know, and, uh, yeah, it was really stressful. You know, I, initially, I committed to uh, Southern University. Really? Before I went to New Hampshire. And then some things happened that uh, – that just happened, and I decommitted, and then eventually, you know, out of all those top five schools that recruited me, uh, New Hampshire stayed on me, and uh, they still wanted me later in the recruiting process. You know, that's that's crazy because things work out how they how they should work out. You know? Yeah, exactly. I'm a, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that that just because you make a decision, if you change your mind, then it was definitely meant to happen. And and obviously, by you going to New Hampshire, that puts you in a position to be where you are today so who knows if, yeah, you exactly. to, yeah. if you would have gone to another school if you would be where you are today you know yeah um what was it about them that made you decide to go there new hampshire <laughs> so they brought me in you know when it was a spring you know i didn't know too much about the northeast you know I've, i'd never been out of texas before this right. so this is my first time actually going to the east coast and uh i visited you know during the spring the weather's nice you know everybody's out you know in shorts <laughs> you know I'm like, yo, this is this is like the perfect weather, you know. So I'm going <laughs> up there to this nice weather school, you know. And then I, uh, like, I knew the basketball team was okay, so I knew initially, you know, the like not being overly confident that I would be able to play on the team, you know. And uh, I initially committed right away, like right on the visit. Really? Yeah. So, so after that, you know, I knew I was going to New Hampshire. So um, that's similar to my situation when I when I committed to Southern Utah. I also committed uh, during my visit, and actually they never recruited me, and um, I ended up going there to to take an official visit to go to a party actually, um, and I so happened to see the coach, and I told him, hey, I'll, I'll take a visit. I had one visit left, and I said, uh, 
I'll take an official visit. You can give me a hotel. So yeah. that's what he did. And that's, and then, and it's crazy because I ended up signing there on that weekend and I, I still had my four trips to go to. And, oh, wow. and, uh, and, I, and I was so convinced and I, I felt so comfortable that, that I signed that weekend. So it's really about, going somewhere you feel comfortable with and, yeah, exactly. and, and just running with that and not caring what anybody else thinks, you know, so maybe somebody might've tried to talk you out of going to New Hampshire. If, if, if you would have talked to somebody about it beforehand, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Cause you know, it's so far away from home from Texas to New Hampshire, you know, it's like mm -hmm. not seeing the family for almost come like prepare. It kind of prepared me for the Europe, for the Europe experience, you know, being away from home. Right. For so, for so long, you know, and just, uh, just staying, you know, you know, just staying where you're at. You know what I mean? You have to stay where you're at, you know? Yeah. So you um, were named to the second team All-American East team in 2016 and 17. Mm -hmm. um, did you have ever have the feeling you should have been on the first team? Oh, man, every time, you know? <laughs> and it's like, you know, you see those preseason, even the preseason rankings, you know? Yeah. They, they, I don't think they've ever had me in the first team, you know, and I've, Every season, I would take that as motivation, you know, just to to prove them wrong, you know, and uh, and that's that's how I went. That's how I still go to this day, you know, just proving people wrong that I belong on the level that I'm at, you know, just yeah. proving people. Yeah, I, I'm sure that's going to be a common theme in this interview. That yeah, exactly sure. that point that 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 you were you got a little bit of a chip on your shoulder and you want to prove to everybody that you belong where you are. Uh, yeah, for sure, man. So. Um, now we'll talk a little bit about about the agents. How did you find an agent during your what you found your agent during this obviously during your senior season at yeah. New Hampshire? So how did so, how did that process go? Yeah, it was uh that was that was almost more stressful than the uh, <laughs> the recruiting process. But you know, like uh you know they you know agents hitting me up on all the social medias now nowadays. You know they just hit you up just they could just type you just text you just right away. You don't even right. know who it is. Right. They could just say they're an agent and they want to represent you. And it's it's really tough, you know, just seeing who is like the real people and, you know, who are the guys that are trying to trying to scam you out of your money, you know. And right. I think that was more of a, more of the stressful thing, you know. Yeah. And uh, I initially had – I went with uh, a group called Go Empire Group. Mm -hmm. So those are the guys that I ended up signing with. But it was like, you know, like all those big agencies, like uh, – uh, what is it? The big Octagon, they, Octagon. they recruited me uh, a lot. It was a lot. I can't remember now. Did but you? It was a, it was a, I know it was just a ton of, like, individual agents, you know, that really didn't have, like, a big uh, clientele. But they, you know, they kept, like, a close-knit of guys. Right. And, uh, you know, like, it's the same thing as recruiting. You know, they sounded good, you know. We'll put you here, 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 here. And, you know, me not knowing what Europe was, you know, what leagues are – you know, are like the best. I had to do a little bit of research, and uh, some of the leagues that the team, the the agency that uh, I initially went with, I mean, it was like almost all facts. You know, going, you know, starting in either Belgium, second league Germany, um, I think it was uh, second league France. You know, just places that uh, you know, first year guys would be, it would be a good situation for them. You know, right. Um, I got two two uh, follow up questions first. Um, did you have anyone that you that helped you with with finding an agent? As for me, my coach really took the reins and yeah. really weeded read some people, weeded yeah. people, weeded people out. And um, so at the end, I think he he had weeded out a couple of guys, and there were three left. And okay, th this is is part of the second question. I'm old, man, so there was no there was no social media. There wasn't nobody yeah, exactly. on, on social media. Right. So, so they're all calling the office or my coach or whatever. So um, like the second part to the question was um, first of all, did you, did you have someone helping you out? And second of all, how has social media impacted um, or how did it impact you? Was it, was it, did it make it more stressful that people could reach out to you directly over social media? Yeah. Uh, the answer to the, the, like the, the social media part, I think it was a lot more stressful, you know, cause you know, you 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 might be even trying to pick it like uh, you might be down to like your top best eight, top two agents that you want to go with, you know, and then, you know, another agent just comes up and says, "Yo, can we talk?" You know, and uh, I just want to tell you stuff. They, I mean, some agents might even, you know, say some bad stuff about the agents that you yeah. want to go with, you yeah. know, and it's like, is this guy like really for real, or is he like, is he like trying to mess with me, you know? And I've 
I've heard the stories before I even knew about Europe, about different agents that are just, they're just bad. And, you know, they just, sometimes they even look out for themselves. So it's really, it's really scary, especially like you said, now with social media out there and you don't know who, who, who was real and who was, who was a fake agent out there right now. Who was helping you out? Who was giving oh, you advice? Was it was really just myself, really. You know, I was just going That's over, tough. you know, I, I would talk with it with my, with my wife. And, uh, you know, I'll just tell her, you know, how I feel, how, you know, basically just how I feel about different agents, you know, when we have the conversation. Mm-hmm. And then she would, you know, just tell me, you know, just go with my gut. You know, she's with me 100 percent wherever I go. So it kind of gave me the confidence, you know, just to weed out different agents that didn't feel too right with me. Right. And so it's always important to to go with your gut and make sure that you feel comfortable. Um, nobody exactly. can take, take that decision away from you because it's your decision to, to make or break. Um, but yeah, I think it's crazy that you didn't have anybody really helping you out besides Monica, because yeah, 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 that's yeah. that's a, a, a tough thing. And you and and I mean, of course, you can jump online, you can you can invest investigate these yeah. things like that. But it really comes down to how you feel. And and if you didn't have anybody um, helping you out or that knew about European basketball that could could help you out you know, then that, that's tough. And, and that's why that's why I wrote this book. Yes, exactly. I knew... and I, I wish I had that book when I first came out because it's, it's really helpful. I've read a little bit. It's, it's really good stuff. It's, it's, it's crazy how much guys don't, don't know or understand, and girls, what they don't understand about coming over here. And if you don't have any, any solid information, it could be, it could be tougher. So uh, when, you, when you, after the season, your senior season, did you go to any NBA camps or summer leagues? Right after uh, the season? No, I didn't have like maybe what was it? My, so my fourth. This is my fifth year. So my like during the summer of this past this past summer, this was my first time going to NBA camps. Really. So even out of like college, I never even got like looked at. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Chip on your shoulder. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Exactly. I got exactly. you. Exactly. So let's talk about how you came over to Germany. Now let's let's talk about your your rise, your meteoric rise to where you are now. Um, so you came over to, to Germany, your rookie season played in USC Heidelberg. I think they were called USC Heidelberg at that time. Yeah. Uh, in the second league. MLP, MLP. MLP. I think, okay. yeah. Um, and in Heidelberg in the, in the second, second uh, Bundesliga here, it's second league for everyone who doesn't understand that. Uh, you played two seasons there, right? That what happened? You played two seasons in Heidelberg, right? Yes, two seasons, yes. How was how was it for you coming over to Europe and playing just in the second league? Did you have any did you have any expectations of, of what 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 you were waiting for and what was waiting for you in Europe? And did you have like that chip on your shoulder to prove that you could play in the in the first league? Yeah, yeah, no, like like you said, it's the the chip on your shoulder. You know, I think I really uh, took that into to my thought. You know, I think I might have overly thought about you know trying to prove people wrong because that first season i've like i was really struggling like games i would have like nothing in the stat sheet like it was like really <laughs> bad you know and you know most teams they would they would cut the foreigner that wouldn't produce like i was like i was like i wasn't producing i should say so uh it was really tough that first season you know especially being that far from home and you know um the time zone difference you know not being able to speak to family you know rather than being maybe an hour ahead of them, you're being like seven hours right. ahead of them. And, you know, it's really tough, especially when uh family's working and, you know, they get off late and you're going to sleep by the time they get off work. Mm-hmm. So it's like really tough. And it's, then, uh, uh, it's crazy. Like that's, um, <laughs> that's what everybody says that you got to make an appointment to, to talk to your family. No, nah, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's actually crazy. It's actually crazy. <laughs> um, so did you have any, any, any adjustment problems uh, when you first got out, out over here? Because the game is different. The, the yeah, game is different I think, than I back think the, physic, the physicality, I think just in Germany, man, it's just, it's just really different. <laughs> it's different. It's different physicality. And I think the speed of the game is, it's a lot faster than college. I think college has like a 30 second shot clock. Yeah. That's a, that's a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize how huge the difference it was until I came over here, you know, like I'm used to, you know, taking my time, bringing up the ball, mm-hmm. but you need to bring it up. Like, you got to go. Fast. Yeah, you got to bring it up really fast because, you know, you bring it up slow, you have, like, 15 seconds, and then the set's done. You got to go play high finger rolls. It's, it's really fast. But uh, I'm Calling the big guy up. Come, come, come. Yeah, yeah, come on, come on, come on. And then uh, I think that, like, you know, the time difference, you know, 20-minute halves to, like, right. 10, 
10 minute quarters right. is like a really big difference. And then uh, other than that, I think that was probably the biggest difference. And then just, I think just with my game, I think going from college playing maybe 35 to 40 minutes a game right. to, right. to uh, going to from like 20 to 25 minutes, it was really tough for me, you know, having to pick my spots and um, actually trying to get going without just, you know, waiting for the ball. I think that was really tough on me. And I think there, I've learned that in this in the second year. In there's, there's, uh, I mean, actually, it's good that you that they kept you your first year, even though you, you think that you didn't play that well. Right. Because, I mean, it, it helped you to adjust. But like the things that you said, like the 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 thirty second um, shot clock in college versus twenty four over here, and uh, just a lot of there's a lot of things that are just different. And and I think it's really understated that people don't realize that before they come over here. And and I, I, it's it's a big adjustment. It's not it's not just like I'm going to come over here and, and I'm going to dominate. And yeah, exactly. a lot is a lot is expected of a, a foreigner. Yeah. You know? Did you have any – did you ever feel any pressure, let's say, the first season especially? And, you know, um, that's the thing. I've never – I think I put more pressure on myself than the uh, than the uh, the organization put on me, you know. And, you know, I'm, I've even seen, like, a guy – like, my first year, a guy came in, you know, they brought him in for a little bit. And then uh, they just ended up cutting him. I was like, wow, I think he's playing way better than me. <laughs> this point, my next? Season, they, they cut him. I'm like, oh, my God, what is going on here? <laughs> so then – you know, I was like, okay. So after that, I think I've relaxed a little bit, you know, and that they have so much faith in me, you know, even though I wasn't playing well, I just try to bust my butt in practice every day and try to get better as the season went on. So then after after your second league uh, experience, you moved on to Ludwigsburg in the, in the Bundesliga in the first league. Uh, you played two more seasons there. Was it a big adjustment going from the second league to the first league? I think uh, I think the difference was just how the the way Louisburg play. I think it was more fitted to my style. Mm -hmm. You know, the run and gun. I, I like I played that all throughout high school. Uh, not so much, not so much in uh, in college, but it was kind of more or less, you know, full court press. You know, getting your man one on one. Um, but yeah, I think I think I was more suited for Louisburg than I was for Heidelberg, to be honest. Okay. And, I, and I, I think I did really well that first year in Louisburg. So obviously you adjusted quickly. Um, you led the, the team to the finals last season, and you were named MVP, which is a huge accomplishment. Um, was there a moment when you felt while you were in Ludwigsburg like, okay, I made it? Sorry about that. Hold on, say it again. Was there was there a moment when you when you were in in Ludwigsburg that you were like, okay, now I made it? Mm, maybe during the bubble. Maybe I think it was during that mm -hmm. bubble time when we came back from Corona. I had, uh, I had really, I was like playing like really well. I think JP had the confidence in me to play some point guard mm -hmm. throughout uh, throughout the bubble, and I think that that confidence just led over into that uh, that second year in uh, Lewisburg when I came back. I think you know him, JP, and then uh, you know Josh King, the assistant there. They just had the confidence in me. Just uh, you know, just have the ball in my hands and you know, just control the team. It's it's right because I remember watching you guys when when you were in the bubble and and it seemed like you were um more aggressive. You were yeah. you were I guess you were hitting your stride that you felt like you definitely felt more comf comfortable. Yeah, and, for sure. And, um, and it showed and it showed in your play. So um, so after your second season in Lewisburg, you you go then to NBA camp, summer summer league with with Phoenix, right? Yeah. Uh, how was that experience? Yeah, man, it was uh, it was surreal. So you're working with it's, it's some of the main guys, some of the main coaches, but it's more or less like the guys that are you know cutting up film. You know, some guys they might have some coaching experience, but it was like really cool. We met uh, Michael Bridges. Um, who else was it? Uh, the left-handed point guard. I forgot his name. Oh, my God. But we met, we met, like, two or three of the NBA the players that were on the NBA team. They ended up flying with us to uh, to Vegas. So, you know, we talked with them. You know, they saying how we're doing and stuff. And, you know, in Vegas, you know, you're playing in the games and you see, like, a crowd of people just getting rowdy. And it's like NBA players just walking courtside, ready to see your game. You're like, what is going, like, what is going <laughs> on here? You know, it's like. It's like a really crazy experience because you're so used to watching them play 
the game. Now they're coming to watch you play for their team, you know. And right. it's, it's really cool that they come and support their uh, their team, you know, no matter what the event. Um, so after after tasting that NBA life in the summer league, yeah, have you given up that NBA dream, or is that something that you you have maybe in the back of your head? Because some people some people they hold on to that dream maybe too long, and they don't yeah. focus on where they where they are. You know, I talked I talked to Ricky Paulding, and he told me that he gave up that dream. Um, I think after his third or fourth season overseas, and mm. uh, it helped him to focus on on the job at hand in, in Oldenburg. So, um, what what's what's your situation? How do you feel about that? Yeah, I think <laughs> I'm still keeping the options open. You know, I still want to make it there. You know, it's, I think that's like the biggest goal for any American is just to right. get a taste of that NBA even even more. You know, I know I had the summer league, but it's like you want to be on the roster now, right? Or a roster spot. So I think the 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 dream is still open. You know, and uh, you know, like I like Europe's not even that bad. You know, even in Euro League is. Some of the top NBA, some of the some of those NBA guys are still playing in Euroleague. Yeah, so, so it's that's not a bad league. That's the thing is is, of of course, no one, none of us that mm -hmm. play basketball, grow up thinking, "Ooh, I'm gonna go practice at five thirty in the morning. I'm gonna go to run some sprints so I can go to Europe." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, for real. That, that's unrealistic. No, none of us think that. We think yes. NBA or bust, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so what I'm trying to do is to to make sure that people realize that Europe is a viable option, and um and that it's it's not just a uh, okay I didn't make the league, yeah I guess I'll go to Europe because then you're you're screwed because then you're not going to play as well as you probably should. Yeah, exactly. Um, and a lot of those you know those NBA guys like G League or even guys that play in the NBA they kind of struggle over here in Europe. Oh yeah. You know, and you know I think it's even better if you start in Europe first and then go to the NBA. Because it's, it teaches you, it teaches you a lot of the fundamentals of stuff that you might not even been taught, and I'm still learning a couple of the things that uh, from you know a couple of Europeans, you know, just different footwork stuff, and mm -hmm. I think it's helping me a lot. That's a good point. That's a good point. So now let's move forward. You are in Alba Berlin, one of the most successful uh, teams in German basketball history. Mm -hmm. uh, your starting point guard of Alba Berlin. You're playing Euroleague. Your four-year rise is nothing short of incredible. Um, mm -hmm. When you look back on your development, what do you attribute your success to and that think, rapid development? I think just the confidence, you know, just in myself. I think, like, going back to that first year in Heidelberg, you know, my confidence wasn't – it's probably at its all-time low. That's probably the reason why some games I didn't even contribute nothing to the, to the team. And then in that second year, we had a we had, we had a, a lot of veterans. Uh, Daniel, uh, D Danny, uh, Oplin, uh, Eric Palm, Philip Hyden, even Shai, yeah. like, you know those guys. I basically like you know just surrounding myself just with those veterans, you know, just having my confidence, you know, just built up around them. And you know, that second year Heidelberg, I think I learned the reason of just playing confident and. Not trying to be too high or too low, you know. You just got to be like even kill whatever whatever happens during the game. Yeah, and I think that helped me on my rise to uh to be in Alba Berlin right now. I mean, it, I mean, I know guys that 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 started in the second league or or things like that, but I don't know too many guys that started in the second league in Germany and in four years they were a Euro League player. I, I, I don't know too. I've been around this game for quite, quite a while and I can't remember that ever happening. So that's a real uh, a real plus to your to your work ethic for sure. I mean, you're not just, yeah. just going to do something like that in four years, make that kind of stride in four years um, if you're not putting in the work. You know, yeah, exactly. So I, it's, especially, it's, it's, a, it's a chip on the shoulder again, man. We're going to say throughout this interview. Yep, yep. Chip on the it's shoulder. It's going to be right there. Um, <laughs> so I, I remember I hit you up earlier this season after you were in, in Berlin because um, it seemed like you, you were having trouble fitting in. It seemed like, but from my perspective as an old head and someone who watches the game, it mm -hmm. seemed like you were you weren't playing bad, but it seemed like you were – yeah, trying maybe too hard to fit in, not exactly playing how you played in the past. Of course, it's a different system, it's a different coach, it's a lot of a lot of things that are new. Um, but it looked like that you were just a little bit a little bit off. And I would say like the last couple of months, for sure, the last two months 
in watching your game. It's really, really gone, gone upwards. And, and, and I think, um, I think that that's very important not to lose that confidence. Yeah. And can you talk a little bit about, you know, the, the adjustment you may, you maybe had to make going from a different, especially a, a huge style of play difference being with, John Patrick mm -hmm. in Ludwigsburg and being with the coach in Alba now, it's two totally different styles. Was that something that, I don't want to say hindered your development, but was it something that you really had to adjust to? Yeah, no, for sure. Like like you said, it's two totally different styles. You know, with JP, it's a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, uh, high ball screen. You might even get like maybe five or six ball screens in one possession with JP, but here it's more, um, you know, moving off the ball, you know, just read, just reading how the defenders playing you, and when you have a guy like Luke Sigma, and you know, well, even all our bigs that could just really pass the ball whenever yeah. they're open, it's, it makes the game a lot easier for you, you know. And, and I think I've learned that these last uh, couple months is that I don't have to do everything by myself. I think I right. think I'm trusting more of my teammates, you know, just giving them the ball and making them, you know, just if I'm open, then they'll read me. If I'm not, right. then I trust that they're not gonna pass me the ball to cause a turnover. I think that's one of the biggest adjustments I had to make throughout this uh this season. You you of course as a point guard it's it's you want the ball in your hands. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. So so you've got to get used to playing off the ball now and expecting it to get it back in a position for you to help the team, whether it be by scoring or or passing. So you've got to move a lot more off the board, off the ball as opposed to in, in Ludwigsburg. There's nothing yeah. wrong with either style. I'm not Yeah, it's not, no, there's nothing wrong. It's exactly. just it's just every coach has their has their has their thing. Yes. Um, on on a side note, um I, I don't know if you knew this, but I coached in the first league for fifteen games, right? Uh -huh. And um I had three wins. In those fifteen games I had three wins. One of those wins against John Patrick when he was Oh man, that's a big <laughs> win right there, man. That's a big win. One of, those, one of those wins was against JP. So I can say I, I, Did he say anything after time. the game to you? Did he say anything oh, no, after he was, the game? He, no, I mean, JP is cool as a fan, man. No, he, yeah, he, he knew is. it was a difficult situation for me. Um, and, um, and yeah, so he was, he was, he gave me a lot of support and wished me well on my, on my journey. So that was cool. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about um, the adjustment for you playing not only Bundesliga, not only playing the, the normal league, but you've also got the cup. You've got a game this weekend in the cup. You've got yeah. Euro League. Um, how big of an adjustment is that for you to having a lot more games, a lot more travel, uh, and things like that? How How is that for you? Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of travel. and it's, it's wary on the body, man. So, I, you know, when I was younger, I, I always took stretching for granted. But now, now I'm one of those guys that stretch <laughs> – Every before every game, every practice, it's actually crazy how much I stretch now. So, <laughs> so I think just the traveling and uh, you know, just having the amount of games. You know, every player loves to play three games, three games a week, but it's sometimes it's it's, uh, it just gets tough on the body sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, those those little bumps and bruises that you get in oh, every game get yeah. multiplied because you're playing more. Yes, exactly. I and. I think this might be the first year I've had. I went to like get treatment from the from our uh, uh, physio. Like this year, I I might have had the most times. I went to treatment this year than I've had in the last four years. Right. <laughs> so it's and yeah, and that goes to show how many games we have and so little time to recover. Right. You know, going from one game a week to like three games a week is really tough. Right. Um, what piece of advice would you give yourself? the senior of senior in college version of yourself about what to expect when you come over to Europe, you've given yourself some advice. Yes. Uh, I would tell them just to stay confident, you know, um, pick the agent that fits you well, you know, don't go off what, uh, what other agents are saying. And then, uh, you know, just stay who you are, you know, the stay to the grind and, you know, the grind you like right now is, Stay to the grind, really, and then yeah. everything will be prosperous to you after that. Yeah, that's good advice. Um, so now let's move a little bit to your off the court life. So last summer, you got married um, to your. How long have you guys been together? Ooh. <laughs> Might get in trouble if I get it wrong. Uh, <laughs> if I see the shoes flying years? to the <laughs> nine years. <laughs> I think I have to ask her that. Um, yeah, yeah. 
Um, so you got married, you, you have a son together. Yeah. Um, how has, has family life changed your, your whole focus and everything off the court? Yeah, it's definitely given me a, a different pr perspective on life. You know, uh, I used to always have basketball, you know, the most important thing, you know, to me, you know, it's either, you know, down the court or, you know, uh, die, down the court or whatever, you know. Yeah. But now it's more, I want to focus more on my family, you know. You know, now I'm doing, trying to do more stuff. Now that we have a kid now, right? now I'm, uh, you know, just trying to focus on them now. You know, now it's like family and then basketball now for me. So of I course, think that, having a family that that changes everything. Having, yeah, having yeah, a wife, it does. Yes. Having, I, didn't, having a child, I didn't think it, it would change it like this, but it's it's such a it's such a big difference in just how I just hold myself just for my family now is really big. What I, what I noticed when I was a player, um, it having a family definitely made it easier to accept losses. Yes. Um, yeah. Oh, yes. No. I'm a sure. horrible loser. Terrible, uh, I, I hate it too. Like before, my wife, my wife, and my kid got here. You know, I'll just be here by myself, and I just be like, "Man, like, what could I have just done better it. to win the game?" Like you just going through that stuff, and now they're here. Now it's like I can come home. My son is always laughing and smiling, mm -hmm. so I just go home and just make him laugh, and my days, my days good now. My days better. <laughs> is it difficult for you to balance um, being a husband and a father? with your professional life as a, as a player? Uh, I think, I think it is, you know, cause right. You know, right now my son, he's nine months old and now my wife is just, uh, just doing all the heavy loads right now while I'm gone. And right. you know, Euro league, it's like, you're gone most of the time. Right. So it's, it's really been difficult just, you know, just trying to help her with, uh, with my boy now and, uh, you know, trying to go out and do stuff with her. You know, she's, she's just cooped up in the house, just, taking care of my son so I know it's like really tough on her just you know just mentally that she's just in the house and not really able to do stuff without me uh you know being here just to experience that stuff right okay so actually it's good that that we went on that way because I I actually hit up Monica earlier today and told her I, I got a question for her and now is the time is she around yeah, yeah she's right here let, let her jump on all right here you go babe <laughs> You got me now, man. I'm here. <laughs> Hi. How you doing, Monica? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. So it's 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 your question time. Okay. Like like I hit you up earlier. So, um, I mean, I was I was also a professional for for a long time, and I I, I was married, um, one time before, so I know exactly um the pressure that you might feel being being a, a wife, a mother things like that in a foreign country. And my question for you is, um, is it difficult or has it been difficult for you as a mother, as a, as a, not as, not, not as a mother, as just mm -hmm. Monica, just, yeah, just Monica, has it been difficult for you to, to have kind of lost your identity now, right now you are Jalen's wife. You're, mm -hmm. you're a mom. You're, you, so is it, have you kind of felt like that you lost a little bit of your own identity while being in Berlin or wherever you guys have been? Actually, no, because um, the start of Jalen's career when he became a professional, we kind of went like our separate ways, but we stayed together. Mm -hmm. So I didn't lose myself. I went to go and pursue my own career and made sure I had something for myself. Good. So last year was the first year that I came to live with him. Mm -hmm. uh, COVID was tough because we couldn't do anything. I couldn't right. go explore and I'm very independent. So um, this past year, I finished my master's degree. So I still Excellent. kept that identity for myself. Um, mm -hmm. Being here, it is tough because I am alone. I right. have family to help. Right. It's just me and Jalen. And then I haven't met any of the other wives because of COVID. Um, so that COVID just makes everything more difficult. But slowly, um, I am starting to kind of get out there and explore a little bit and just make sure I don't lose myself because it's tough being just me and Donovan. Like, it's just yeah. tough, too. Mm -hmm. I think um, that's a, a very important point that you don't lose yourself, that you have something besides your whole focus being on child and hubby. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. I, I really applaud you for getting your, your master's and, and pulling that through. And, and, um, and, and just my, my 
a pall on you would be just really just to to it was it was really difficult for my I was married before it was def definitely very difficult on on my wife uh, mm -hmm. as we moved around and things like that only being Sean's wife yeah and she had a career before me and she was she was a hot shot in, in her career and then once we started to move around to different countries then she she was only the wife you know the and mom. I, I guess maybe because this is like our my first year kind of here maybe I haven't experienced that pressure yet um mm -hmm. but I can totally see where that comes from because we have to take a back seat we're taking the back seat making that sacrifice right. for you guys to live your dream and I right. always told Jalen like wherever you go in life I will follow you because we will come from a small town like <laughs> nobody in their dreams would ever think like that they could make it playing professional basketball like I wouldn't ever be a person to take that from him so I just told him you play as long as you want and I'm going to support you um so I know you know I understand the sacrifices I have to make in order for him to be successful but him having us here makes all the difference yeah. um every time we come visit or w w i'll come visit or we were with him um he's played his game has improved tremendously so i know yeah. you know we make a positive impact on him yeah. Yeah. okay thank you monica that was the question i had for you i appreciate giving your point of view as a as a wife mother and um i i really applaud you for the support you're giving him and I know you, you, you mentioned also that he, he gives you a lot of support as well. So. Yes. Uh, oh, quick question. How long have you guys been together? He said nine years. We'll be nine years this year. <laughs> okay, so just you don't have to throw the shoe at him or something like that. No. Just you know what? To make I, sure. actually for, I forgot myself. I had to count on my fingers. I was like, wait, hold on. Wait, <laughs> to make sure. So, yeah, he was close. <laughs> okay. We both forgot after we got married. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let him jump off for the last part, and then I'll let you guys have your, your evening. Thank together. you. Thank you. Yo. Okay, so I've got um, a question from from Breezy Way Fifty Nine. How did basketball change your perspective in life? Uh, you know, it just gave me, like my wife said, it just gave me a, you know, a different. Uh, it's basically just gave me a different life. Um, you know, just taking it as far as I can and uh, trying to see where I go with it. And it's, I mean, it's taking me around the world, so I can't, uh, can't blame it, you know. <laughs> just a little orange ball traveling the world with it, man. It's, it's lovely. Good. What's a typical off day for you in Berlin? Typical off day, uh, you know. You got any favorite places to eat or just like? Yeah, we, I mean, we have a couple different places. Like today we tried this uh, this burger place. They have like curly fries there there there's also like a uh like a like a little like a little sushi spot that sells like pho like you know yeah, like yeah. ramen yeah. so we usually go there but uh have you been to uh um uh not, not a, the place is killing me uh, uh burgermeister no 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 not yet no oh, you got to go to burgermeister man we always see them leaf Rondo. we're like yeah you got no. You got to go there, man. You got to go really to Burgermeister. Oh, I go there every time I'm in Berlin. I'll be I'll be there this weekend, as a matter of fact. But okay, uh, that's a bet. That's you, a bet. You got to go to you got to go to Burgermeister for sure. All right, that's a bet. What's the best burger? What's the best burger they got there? They got oh man, they got they got the Burgermeister. The Burgermeister. No, what's, what's the best burger? What's the best? It, it's called the Burgermeister. Oh, it's the Burgermeister. What's yeah, all in it? What's all yeah, in nah, it? It's it, it's it's a um, a whole lot of mess. It, but it's <laughs> bomb. It's bomb, man. Um. So, what's your off season routine routine like? Um. Usually, what's I'll a typical up, workout day for, look for you? Usually, I'll wake up maybe seven, eight in the morning. I'll go, mm -hmm. you know. Maybe do like light basketball stuff, you know, work on ball handling, you know, stationary shots, um, get a lift maybe for an hour. So I'll be done around maybe 11 or 12. And then in the afternoon, I have this, uh, usually I work out with this trainer, uh, Corey Ross. I usually work out with him during the afternoon with him and uh, Terry Allen. He plays for uh, Byworth right now. So I usually work out with them too and, uh, Usually we just get some uh, individual work in for an hour, an hour and a half. So that's really just about maybe five, five, yeah. four days out of the week. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've got a I mean, question from 
I'll say uh, Wadi R M fifty seven. This must be someone you know. Um, best memory from high school ball. Oh, this best one. memory. <laughs> yeah. Uh, probably going to uh, the state semifinal. Well, not state semifinal. Like the regional semifinals, my senior mm -hmm. year. Uh, I mean, I feel like that year we could have really uh, won state, but we just came up a little short. But it was just. Uh, I think just that whole senior year, it was just like a big memory, man. I just, I still talk to a lot of those guys, you know, especially like high school, man. It's yeah. you just see you just see people doing their own thing now, and it's yeah. uh, it's really cool to see. And you always have those memories just to look back on, you know, on those people that you remember. Like Monica said, you guys are from a small town, right? Yeah. So, so I guess people are seeing you on Facebook or Instagram, and they're seeing what you're doing. They're, they're like, wow. Jalen made it. Like, he's the yeah, guy. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Uh, like like she said, it's small town, you know. Not a lot of people, you know, make it out. You know, usually sometimes they just stay there and, you know, work like the factory job. And, uh, yeah, it's just, like like I said, it's the boss take me around the world. I can't complain about my life. So, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to go into overtime. We've got, um, I got some some questions, some quick answer questions for you. Mm -hmm. um so the, the the my teammates out there get to know you a little bit better so um name your all-time nba starting five position uh, doesn't matter position doesn't matter so i got Shaq at the five i'm gonna have tim duncan at the four lebron at the three michael jordan and kobe they playing the they sharing the one and two okay i got you that's that's a tough matchup that's yeah that's a tough, tough matchup that's, for anybody. that's tough right there <laughs> Port side seat, Houston Rockets, Dallas Mavericks, San Antonio Spurs. Since oh, Houston Rockets, Rockets, no question. <laughs> Rockets, <man. laughs> what current NBA player would you compare your game to? I've always liked Paul George. I always liked Paul George's game. He's so smooth, man. And uh, he plays both ends of the floor. He plays defense and offense. So, so you're, compare, compare you're comparing yourself to Paul George? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, I got you. I feel you. Okay. Who, who, do, you, who, do, you, who do you think? Who do you compare it to? That's tough, man. That's tough. That's that's really tough. I always, I, always, I just like him and uh, Chris Paul. I love their game. I was just, I was just going to say Chris Paul because I see more as a as a leader, the general type, and you influence the game in ways that don't necessarily show up in in in, in the scorebook. And actually, speaking of that, um, I want to tell the teammates out there, um, especially in Euroleague, right? Guys are not Americans are not averaging like twenty five points a game. No, unless right. you're like Mike James. Unless you're Mike James, and that's unless you're, yeah. all the time. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So what what I want to really punch home to people back home is, if you see stats and you see Jalen with eleven points and 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 five assists and two steals in the Euro League, that's, that's a big. damn good game. Yeah, that's a yes, yes. <laughs> yes, that's a good game. Sure. That's for sure a good game. Like, and I think like a lot of people of, don't understand that. Yeah, and it's like it's like really minimizing the Euro League, like. You have to do like a certain thing, like really well that you're really good at, and you know the team they're gonna find a way to help you exploit it. You know, right? They're gonna help. Well, they're gonna help you use it. I should say, right? Exploit. Um, who's the best point guard in the league right now? Oh, and Chris Paul. In, he's, in, in the in the NBA. I mean. Yeah, Chris Paul. Uh, he's leading the Suns. Like I think every team he goes to, he always yeah, he's always he a winner. So I, I personally, I personally. I respect his game. I think he's a, a fantastic player. I just don't like him. <laughs> I just don't like him. You just don't like him? I, I just don't. I, I think he's a hell of a player. He's the he's the kind of guy that you would probably play against and hate his guts. Oh, yeah. But if you had sure. him on your team, you would never give him away. Oh, no, for sure. For sure. That's how, that's how I see it, too. Like, when he goes against other point guards, it's like either he's talk, talking some mess or – I think that's just NBA, but it's just I don't know. He I, I feel you on that though. But I like his game though. You can't you can't hate the game, man. Number no, two. no, no, no. Um, what's the best thing about being a pro? Uh, <laughs> maybe, besides uh, getting paid. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Besides get oh man, uh, <laughs> being a pro, I guess just traveling. You get to travel uh, all these different places, and uh, you know you get to see a different uh, view of the world rather than just. Uh, you know, just being in the States. Yeah. I think just being in Europe, you get to see a different side of life, you know, like, and, you know, in Germany, they recycle, and, you know, that's way different than what the States right. are doing right now. Hey, if you and don't then, recycle, if you don't recycle in Germany, the, the, the neighbor's going to be 
knocking on the manager's door and saying, hey, this dude is not doing what he's supposed to exactly. do. Exactly. You're going to get that letter right in, the, that. right in the mail. Going to get the letter right <laughs> in the mail saying, hey, yo, he's not doing his trap. But, yeah, that's, I think just uh, experiencing a different life in uh, Europe yeah. is big. What's, what's the worst thing about being a professional? The worst. Uh, if, is there something? <laughs> the worst. Uh, probably being away from family. Uh, yeah. You're yeah. doing the job for, what, nine, ten months? Right. And you only get to see your family two months out of the year. So right. it's really hard just, uh, like you said, making the appointments with the family is really tough. I mean, I yeah. know now we have FaceTime and, uh, you know, all the social media stuff to check on family. Right. But it's really tough just to get that uh, that face-to-face -face, uh, interaction with different people from your family. Yeah. Um, if you weren't a basketball player, what would be your 9 to 5? A 9 to 5. Hmm. What would you be doing if you weren't a player? I would uh, probably be, you know, there's a like a community – like centers called like Boys and Girls Club back in the states. Right. I would probably just you know just helping kids just you know that been it through uh like a rough neighborhood you know just trying to make it and help them get through uh school you know. I respect that. I respect that. Um, what's your most memorable basketball moment so far in your pro career? Um, when when. Uh, when we won first place last year in the Louisburg, you know, I think that was maybe the close first time in history that they got right. outright in the in the regular season. Anyway, right. I think that was probably the best memory from my basketball career so far. If you if you had to choose one song to play on repeat all through warm ups, what song would it be? Ooh, right now? Huh. Yeah, doesn't matter. It can be from whenever. Okay, that jam. That jam, man. It'll be Kendrick Lamar's uh, Duckworth. Okay, gotcha. For sure, that's that's the jam right there. Um, maybe maybe Monica's, Monica's gonna be listening on this question. Uh, more children for you and Monica? One more. I told her one more. I hope one he's more? a girl. I hope he's a girl. Hey, I tell you, man. I'm telling you, having a girl is the bomb. Yeah, is, is the bomb. <laughs> we'll talk. I, we'll talk. When you have a daughter, <laughs> when you have a daughter. I'll be the first one congratulating you, and we're going to talk. Um, what's your favorite German food? Uh, my favorite German food is just uh, schnitzel. <laughs> that's the, that's the go-to, schnitzel, That's man. the go-to, yeah. Um, give me a game day superstition that you have. Do you have, uh, do you have a game day superstition? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I always put on my left side. So no, my right side before my left. I always do that. Okay. And before, maybe some, well, no. Before I do everything, I put on my shoes and all that. And then last, the last thing I do is just tie up my hair. Last so it has to be like in that order. It has to be in that order. So it goes shirt, you know, shorts, then the socks, right, left, right, left shoe. And then the <laughs> hair has to be last. It has to. Have you ever messed up the order and thought, damn. I think I yeah I think have I think like uh, I don't know I don't, I can't remember recently but I I remember I know I I messed up I'm like oh, I, I I I can't redo it you know so I'm like I gotta go exactly. with it. so hopefully it goes well today. <laughs> um, how do you beat homesickness? Uh, just I think just checking on family you know just seeing how they're doing you know just even if it's you know a short conversation just seeing how's work been how's life you know like my sister she has kids so I just talk with my nephew and my niece to see how they are, if they're being good for her. And just doing that, I think that just uh, that just helps anybody's, you know, just uh, homesickness, I think. Last one. What do you look forward to the most when you retire? I mean, hopefully that's many years away, but is there anything that you look forward to um, when you retire? Uh, I think just having a lot more family time, especially yeah. with uh, Donovan. I know right now he's not going to remember none of this stuff. But, uh, you know, when he gets older, I know he's going to need me, you know, just just to be a man and, you know, just to help him through life. And I want to be there for him when he needs me most. And I, I'm looking forward to that most. That's that's an excellent answer, man. So, man, that's that's all. I'm going to let you get out of here and, and enjoy your night. Glad, glad you made it back from Frankfurt safe, got a win. I appreciate um, it. And, um, yeah, we'll, I'll be in touch. I'm going to be online for a couple more minutes to say something to the teammates. But 
Thank you very much, Jalen, for, 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 for being on and being my, my first guest here on, on the Eurostep. I'm going to hit you up because there's somebody on your team that I want to that I want to interview. So yeah. We'll talk. We'll talk um, okay, that's and, good, man. Um, and I, I appreciate you for having me, man, and let me share my story. No problem, man. I really appreciate you and Monica coming on and, and keep keep it up with the family. Keep it up with your with your rise, your meteoric rise in, in these last five, four years, four or five years, man. It, I, your inspiration to to people that you don't even know, man. You know, you, there's guys that are coming over from from America playing in the seventh league, and mm -hmm. they see a guy like you who made it from this from the second league in, in Germany to Euro League in four years, and you're you're inspiring not only them people that you know, people that you don't know, but also an old head like me. Um, and that's why I really wanted to have you on because it's, I really wanted to highlight and make sure that everyone gets to know that, that personal side to you as well. So I, yeah, I really sure. appreciate you coming on, man, and, and, and I'll be in touch. All right, man. Hey, stay blessed. All right, man. So, teammates, thank you for watching. Um, as usual, my call to action, follow me, of course, here on Instagram. And um, I've also got a YouTube channel now where I'll be loading this video up and everybody can can check out the full video there in case you missed it. Uh, I'll be posting all the Eurostep interviews on exclusively exclusively on my YouTube channel. And um, like I like I always say, if you see some content, some information or something that you that you like or that someone that you know might be able to use, uh, please pass it on to someone. Like it, subscribe all those little things um, so that we can grow the community, uh, the basketball community, um, and, and get the information out there and the content out there that might help someone. That's the most important thing to me. Um, yeah, so everything is is good. First first uh, Euro step in the bag. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you guys and girls on one of the next episodes. And I hope we can get to continue to grow together. Thank you very much. Okay, out.